Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a magnetic excursion update Saturday, November 22nd, around 7.30 p.m. Mountain Time, 2025. Our solar system is racing through space three times faster than we thought. Holy macaroni. And we've got some frigid temperatures that are going to penetrate down into the western U.S. in the beginning of December. A lot to talk about. Keep calm. It's boom time. Well, this is the culprit for that cold air. The polar vortex could bring cold temperatures after Thanksgiving and into December. The polar vortex is weakening, which means New England is in for a colder than usual December with episodic cold snaps. And these types of breakdown in the jet stream here to meridional flow, this is because of the weakening magnetosphere. And it will only get more frequent and worse as the magnetosphere wanes. A quick look at TornadoHQ.com live severe weather map shows very little going on. We've got some lake effect snow and some snow flurries up in the Great Lakes. Um, a little bit of precipitation in the Delmarva, and you can see there's a front here actually. And some snow and rain in Arizona, but no severe weather warnings. Zero, as we have a very quiet system. And now the full forecast. Widespread rain from Texas to the central Appalachians, heavy to excessive rainfall in Southern California and the Southwest. Well, we didn't see much of that on the Tornado HQ now, did we? Scattered thunderstorms and widespread showers are expected from the Texas coast to the central Appalachians today. Heavy to excessive rainfall will continue in Southern California in the desert Southwest through Saturday with heavy rain posing a risk for flash flooding, especially across burn scars and urbanized regions. So heed the warnings. And let's take a look at the GFS model and see when that cold air is going to come in. Here is the 20th, the 21st, the 22nd, 24th. We're getting into gobble day there. And right here, December 1st, this massive plume of Arctic air. Look at these temps up here in... Western Canada, minus 23, minus 25. It's going to be chilly early in the season here. And that cold air pushes all the way down into the Four Corners region where I see temperatures like minus 4 overnight, minus 1. It is going to be sub-zero. And then the Dakotas get hit. Look at these temperatures. Minus 9, minus 13. Absolutely frigid. And that includes the Northeast. 19, 16, 6, 3 degrees. So it should be interesting. Let's take a look at the precipitation in the models here, and we'll move it through. Here is Sunday, Monday. We're going to get some snow at the high elevations in the Four Corners region over the weekend, at the end of the weekend here. And a system will be moving into the Pacific Northwest Sunday into Monday as well, bringing snow to the plains and then into the Great Lakes here midweek. And system after system. Take a look at this one. This is a big one, December 1st, when that cold air is in place, which means a lot of snow out of that system. We even have some tropical stuff showing up here, a hurricane moving up and hitting Louisiana in the first week of December. That would be epic. Christmas hurricane. Let's take a look at the total snowfall accumulation from all these events. And there you can see that big event the first week of December and showing over four feet of snow, North, South Dakota, and say it ain't Minnesota, but it is. These are only models. They are pretty far out here, eight or nine days, but confidence is getting higher that it's going to be epic, and Al Gore will not be pleased. Shut up, Al! Get in your hole! No bud cake! Seismic update. No quakes to note. Normal. To low-level activity worldwide. Good news there. Same's happening here with Worldwide Volcano News. We got a short list tonight. Semadu, an eruption was reported. Ibu, an eruption was reported. Frequent volcanic gas emissions to 14,000 feet at Santa Guito. Um, ongoing volcanic ash to 16,000 feet at Raventador. 7,000-foot blast at Suanacima. Fuego, volcanic emissions observed in webcam. Semadu to 15,000 feet. An eruption reported at Ibu wrapping up Worldwide Volcano News for the day. And that'll bring us over to space weather. And here we are over at space weather. Uh, 
The only thing that will be geoeffective in the next few days is are these coronal holes. Coronal hole 98 is equatorial. So that will be facing Earth in about 24 hours. And we will receive the plasma stream in maybe three days. So midweek. And we do have some active regions turning around the limb there. So we could also get some flaring in about a week that will be geoeffective. And here we see, he, see all of these active regions now turning around the limb, but not really flaring much. Some very mild impulsive sea flares. That's all that's happening now. No real magnetic complexity. But we will be waiting for the coronal hole stream and these more active regions uh, to turn towards Earth and see what happens. Buckle up, buttercup. Our solar system is racing through space three times faster than we thought. Holy Jesus. The solar system's startlingly high cosmic speed may rewrite what we think about the universe. So you see, the problem is um, new measurements using radio galaxies reveal that the solar system is racing through the universe at over three times the speed predicted by the standard model of cosmology. 3.7 times to be exact. So, another example that the standard model of cosmology is incorrect and we need to rewrite the model. I wonder if it has anything to do with the electric universe, why we are traveling so much faster. And this is the talk of the town. It's all the rage. Exothermic core mantle decoupling. And they're mashing it in with Crustal Slip and Charles Hapgood and Chan Thomas. And it's all just gobbledygook. Yeah, because exothermic core mantle decoupling it has nothing to do with the crust. So I don't know what, what, what these people are, are doing or thinking. There is ample evidence um, that the North rotational axis has been pretty stationary for millions of years, meaning the Earth is not tilted whatsoever, and there's tons of evidence against the whole idea. And Leah and I break it all down at 8 o'clock on Rumble, magnetic reversal news, exothermic core mantle decoupling, and cataclysmic pole shift hypothesis. We will share with you the facts and the facts are that there are no physics that can even explain this as being possible. Not only that, there are things like polar ice caps. We have two million year old ice up in the Arctic. Pristine, we found two million year old pristine DNA in that permafrost. And there's ice up to seven million years old in Antarctica that we know about. So there's lots, oh, plus there's no evidence geologically, paleontologically, geophysically. Uh, it, the list goes on and on. Join us in just a moment, 8 p.m. Mountain Time, over on Rumble for the full expose. We would appreciate your support there. And that's a boom to knowledge. Hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and most importantly, be safe. We love you. If everyone that's unsubscribed subscribes, we'll hit 100,000 in no time. And that is a boom. Mm -hmm.